thank you for speaking with me today. Coded Bias was one of my favorite documentaries of 2020. And it was also one of the first that I enjoyed at my first Sundance. So that was a big experience for me. Can you talk to me a little bit about TikTok boom to someone who was going in completely blind and what drove you to make this documentary? TikTok boom um, follows a group of Gen Z influencers and explores how a app best known for teenagers dancing becomes the center of a geopolitical controversy. Okay, and what drove you to make this documentary? Like, what was the interest that sparked the project? I think I was fascinated with both the massive, explosive growth of TikTok and the way it sort of has eclipsed every other social media platform, um, the way that it sort of captured the attention of sort of the youngest of all of the audiences, and also like just how bizarre this story is about having a U.S. president trying to um, ban a social media app. Yeah, for sure. Um, that was one of the most interesting aspects of the documentary. Like I really liked meeting the influencers and getting to know their points of view, but like that was definitely, I was like waiting for that point to like the other shoe to drop, so to speak. <laughs> Um, what draws you to these looks into the technology industry, you know, given your previous project in this one? Well, I'm a sci-fi fanatic and love thinking about technology and spend a lot of time like just researching. And I love the five minutes into the future as like sort of a place to live you know, informed by research, but like, what is this next possibility? <laughs> Where are things likely to go? Um, and that sort of brought me to this, to this tech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understandable, very understandable. I'm also a big sci-fi fan. So sometimes real life is a little too close to sci-fi in my opinion, but you know, it, we're just gonna have to deal with it. Um, as any good documentary uh, is, it always has a good memorable subjects. And I feel like yours has a lot of memorable subjects. And I think grabbing some of the popular influencers adds a massive amount of personality to the doc documentary. Obviously they, each of them have like a very strong personality. Um, can you talk about the process of finding them and picking which influencers you wanted to talk to? Well, I think all of the influencers in the film um, their lives have been changed in some way uh, because of TikTok. And they've used TikTok to make an impact in the world in some way. And um, that is part of the reason I chose them. And also, um, I think their stories illuminate some of the broader themes in the film. And so mm -hmm. I feel like they all had had sort of personal stories that were also connected to the larger um, issues. Yeah. And were there any that you wanted to get in the documentary, but you couldn't end up, you know, agreeing to join? Were there some that you really, really wanted that you didn't? Yes. Get? Yes, of course. Any, any, any ones that you care to reveal? I get, I can't, but I think <laughs> that, you know, on there, there is always an ocean of tears on the cutting room floor because you have to lose a lot of one, you, you have to just lose a lot of wonderful material. Mm -hmm. And I'm always interested in people getting a glimpse of like an influencer's life and how that feels like, especially behind, you know, what we normally see. What was it like going on the streets and seeing, you know, a bunch of fans go up to, um, I can't, remember, I think his name was Spencer, um, and like seeing that experience from a filmmaker's point of view who probably, you know, doesn't have as much association with that life. That was insane. That was like <laughs> George Clooney, Brad Pitt level of celebrity. <laughs> it was like, it felt very A-list celebrity on Hollywood Boulevard, just because like, if you were under 15, you were losing your mind over Spencer <laughs> X. And 
that was just so incredible for me to see, like how the media landscape is changing this sort of new brand of celebrity that's being created, this like sort of new brand of culture that's coming up, emerging. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think the whole thing is fascinating. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. And it was really interesting. I, I was really curious to hear your opinion because I feel like that's definitely something that unfortunately I as an older person I guess like not in the 20 year old range um feel like that's that's something that some people have a hard time understanding and seeing it on that documentary is is very it's I feel like it does a good impact of what the feeling is so I really like how many layers this documentary has it tackles multiple issues like I said um and I almost wish this was like a multi-part series because I feel like there's not enough time to discuss all of the multiple things. Was there one aspect of the documentary that you would tunnel in on if there was more time? You know, I, I think you, I have said that from the onset of making this film is that it could easily be a series and I would probably do it by character. Oh. Um, because I feel like there is, you know, Absolutely. You could do one episode just on looking further into the shadow banning and content moderation, looking further into um, issues of child safety. Like there, there are many mm -hmm. different things that could be its own, um, its own episode. Yeah, for sure. Was there one specific one that you think like could merit its own story? Oh, yes, but I can't think of it right now. <laughs> no problem. I mean, I yeah, definitely all think I have is actually the film I made. <laughs> I, I mean, I think like the idea of like shadow banding is definitely interesting because I feel like that's a topic that people know about if you're in that world. But if you don't, it feels like a weird phrase that perhaps is like it seems kind of like shady, but it's, it, there's, I mean, yeah, I think that there's a lot that could go into it. And I'm glad that you went into it in your documentary, because I feel like for somebody who doesn't know what anything about this world going into this, it's very informative and it goes through a lot of the topics that are, that are timely. <laughs> and is there any topic um, that you didn't have enough time to cover due to filming constraints? Because I know you did this, I'm pretty sure you filmed this during COVID, correct? I did. Was was there anything that you wanted to spend more time on that you didn't get to because of those constraints or maybe just time constraints? Oh, there's always more that there's that saying that like films are not finished, they're abandoned. <laughs> um, and and I think that there's always that you there's always more that you feel like you could do, but mm -hmm. yeah, is is part of what you have to work with. For sure. And I think it's inevitable when we talk about China and social media in a conversation, we're going to talk about censorship. I'm really curious when interviewing that influencer in China, was there ever a concern about discussing the politics of censorship as far as, you know, his well-being and like just how, how far you were willing to push the discussion? I was very clear with my production team in China to put always, in fact, I've been, you know, as a team, we've all been really clear that safety is our first priority always. And that's not just, you know, in, in the, in these pandemic times, but also making sure that the documentary does no harm. And so, um, I just like all parts of the team, the, um, you know, we were in touch with the China production team and they, you know, they uh, sort of led the way of what they thought was mm. appropriate and safe. And I, I trust their instincts. Great, great. Um, and you've also talked a lot about the dangers of technology, obviously, and it's led to a quite quite a few nightmares for me personally. What advice do you have, if any, um, for people who have this fear of the rapid growth and pervasiveness of technology? What advice do you have for them in like dealing with it or maybe understanding it? Oh, it's a really good question. I think that 
it's good sometimes we live in a world where they've become such a seamless part of our lives. And I hope what the film will do, will put a little buffer between us and our technology and allow us a little space to look at it and notice things. And I think in the film, it's, it's an exploration for me too. And mm -hmm. what I hope is that the questions that I'm asking that the audience will also continue to ask their own questions. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's definitely, I mean, being informed is the best way to sort of break down the walls. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I just, I want to know when tackling a film like this, how you kind of plot out maybe like the, the story of the documentary, because obviously there are a lot of moving pieces. How do you go into like, what is the starting point for you and how does it branch out? Story structure is the great dance of the edit of in documentary. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that um, I've had the privilege and the challenge of working on many challenging films that have a lot of um, nuanced, mm -hmm. interwoven narratives. And I think that a lot of it I approach it much like a writer and I use cards and um, treat people much like you would characters when I'm editing. Um, and so, um, yes, it's, I, I approach it very much like a writer. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. And uh, just for my final question, if you had to, I know your your kind of expertise is in this technology field. If you had to explore a, a different story in a different industry, is there one that particularly draws your focus? I love the question. I've always wanted to do something in outer space. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Yeah, I feel like either outer space or like underwater. Oh, yeah. One of those... One of those otherworldly type of settings would be a great place to make a film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, they both kind of have a similarity, even though they're right. They're this different ways. space and and mm -hmm. the, the narrative. So anyway, I would love to. I I I, I guess that's what uh, pushing boundaries is, and when film can show you something that that you can't see with your eye. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I would, I mean, I'm excited for when that project eventually comes to life. I will be in line to watch it. Um, I really want to thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, love the film. Can't wait for people to start talking about it all over again. And I can't wait to join that conversation. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much. It was an honor. Thanks.